Senate and Liz Rogers, the folks behind the new documentary, Hot Water, which debuts tonight at the D.C. Environmental Film Festi uh, Festival. Um, speaking of film festivals, this is not your first quote-unquote film festival. You guys are fresh off the Oscars. Before we get into this, how the heck did you get to the Oscars? <laughs> Give us the gossip. Well, Oh, don't look at, don't look at me. But we, we have friends. Is it a right? trade secret? It's a trade secret. Those are your yes. people. Those are, those those are, are your people. Yeah, well, the yeah. people at the, at the Academy have been very supportive over the years. And uh, we have a lot of friends. And we, we renewed a lot of friendships on, uh, on Oscar night. It was great to be there. Did you meet Jennifer Lawrence? Uh, I don't think of, no. We didn't, I didn't see you. Why? I'm sorry that I didn't do that on your we behalf. Did. You did? Oh, well, we did sit right next to, at the Governor's Ball, we did sit next to... Uh, the entire group from Argo, Ben Affleck and Jane Garner and that whole group. So we did have a chance to meet a lot of, a lot of that group. Hill, isn't it? Uh, well, you I, I, I was talking to Dustin Hoffman and he said, this is just like <laughs> Capitol Hill. I said, your people are prettier. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on to serious news, this documentary. Uh, Liz, let's start with you, you're sort of the star of the film. Mm -hmm. uh, to sort of give our, our, our viewers a little synopsis on uh, how this idea came about and kind of what the film is trying to say. I was working on a documentary in South Dakota about uh, Native American sacred sites in uh, 2008, 2009, and one of our interviews was with a woman who was talking about uh, the Black Hills and that there were a thousand abandoned uranium mines in the area and what kind of impact it was having on families and their health there. And her interview was so compelling, it was so brilliant that we decided we, we couldn't just do a segment in, in that film. We needed to come back and do an entire film on that subject. And we thought then that we would have, uh, at the end of filming in South Dakota for a couple of weeks, we thought we would have a good, meaningful film about these, these families and ranchers and the impacts on their lives of this uranium mining and contamination. And then we started to do the research. And it just didn't stop anywhere. It, it was nationwide, this problem. And no one seemed to really know how bad it was. So four years, nine states, and thousands of miles later, we ended up with this film that, that literally doesn't even begin to touch the problem. And specifically, just in one area alone, 38 million people in Southern California or in the American Southwest get their drinking water from the Colorado River and the Colorado River runs through 16 million tons of radioactive waste sitting on the banks of the Colorado River every day. And they don't know. Impressive. Moab, Utah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, how did you connect with this uh, hip and happening couple? Oh, my gosh. We've been friends for years. So uh, it was kind of a... Uh, it was a natural. It was a, a, a natural partnership. Elizabeth and I have been great friends for a long time. So uh, we are partners in a foundation, a nonprofit that concentrates specifically on health and environmental issues. So when I was working on this project, it was a natural to come together on that. And she and also I also supported the film GMO OMG, right. which was released this year. So. Uh, she's been a brilliant, brilliant addition to the production and the group and support of the project as, as Dennis, who's been a champion of these issues. Well, what's interesting about, about this film is, you know, and having served in Congress for so long, you know, you could probably speak to this, is it does seem as if the momentum behind nuclear energy, at least, uh, is gaining, meaning because it's technically, people think of it as clean, uh, or at least cleaner than coal, uh, and that people view that as, and it does generate a ton of power, so people view that as a, a quite long term solution, and yet this film kind of throws some cold water on that. I mean, hot water. <laughs> hot water, there you go. Can we talk a little bit about sort of your gauge on um, the future of nuclear energy and whether or not you, your former colleagues uh, on Capitol Hill need to watch this film, or if, or if you think that they're moving dangerously close to nuclear energy? Well, first of all, hot water is an important film because it it takes people through what is really the initial phase of that fuel cycle, the mining of uranium, and the poisoning of the uh, of water supplies. I, I found out about the poisoning of water supplies from uh, mineral mining and uh, native properties in one of my earliest uh, years in Congress. And so this here two years after Fukushima, uh, we have not 
solved, either in this country or internationally, a lot of the issues relating to nuclear power. What do you do about the waste? Uh, where's, where, you know, what do you do about it? You put it on a bank, through the account, or a river. Uh, what do you do about the fact that you have 104 nuclear reactors in various stages of relicensing? Some of them are being relicensed despite the fact that they're already operating way beyond the time that they were engineered for. In my area, in, in, in Cleveland, just 60 miles upwind, you have the davis Bessey nuclear power plant, whose management lied about a hole in the head of the reactor, covered it up in the NRC, uh, you have a, a plant that continues to have safety problems, and now you have the head of the NRC, uh, McFarland, who is so, ch you know, uh, ebullient about nuclear power, totally ignoring the underlying safety issues that exist in, uh, in the industry. And, and today, the debate in Congress is whether or not uh, there should be filters put on some of the Mark I reactors mm -hmm. to trap the gases that might release in the event of an accident. And, and there are members of Congress who are opposing that. This industry has too much influence. The industry is uh, is, is all about profits. Uh, they're not about public safety. And so I think this film is important to get people thinking about the broader issues of, uh, of nuclear power. But look, two years after Fukushima, there's a lot of that story that still has not been told uh, relating to higher levels of radioactive iodine measured in cities like, like Portland, Denver, and Fresno. Uh, there's a lot of studies that have been done that they haven't gotten much circulation. This is going to be a big uh, screen effort that will bring people into the into one aspect of the issue. When you really look, just think back down to the practicality of nuclear power, you maybe get six years of power out of out of the um, out of power process, point, yeah. and then you have a half life of. 24,000 years, and another half-life of 24,000 years, and another, and another, and another. For 240,000 years, you've got to be storing that nuclear waste until it's inert. We can't even think back to when, you know, 2,000 years ago, Jesus seems like back in the Stone Age. Yeah, you know, 24,000 years, 240,000 yeah. years. What is that to the taxpayer? That is 240,000 years of nuclear storage. Well, the sad thing is, I mean, you know better you than anybody. Calculate. PC can't think longer than two months. Yeah. Well, so, so the fact that it will be around for another 2,000 years or whatnot, but almost, but, but Wall, yeah, Wall Street, Wall Street I, I, I mean, what is, is that why DC doesn't have to They know they won't be around Wall by Street then, so. Wall Street thinks longer yeah. than two months. Yeah, Wall Street will not invest in nuclear power. Yeah. They want the government to put $60 billion in loan guarantees. They want the government, through Price Anderson, to put off on the public uh, the cost if there's a nuclear accident. Look, this industry is heavily subsidized. It couldn't exist on its own. The power too cheap to meet or ended up being power too, too expensive to use. It's not good for the country. Right, so, I, right, so how do you break that, do you say? Because um, the guy's been in the system, you know, sort of that, that, that vice lock. I'd right. like to comment yeah. in, that, in that the industry, or at least the, the mining side, well, the entire industry, I should say, is very much under-regulated. It's under-regulated. Uh, one company, just one company that we, we talk about in the film, Kermigee, is the company that was held responsible for the death of Karen Silkwood. Right. We got into the plant where she was contaminated with plutonium. And 40 years, 40 years after that happened, that plant has still not been recovered. It's still, the land has been not recovered. There is still toxic waste buried on that site. And there isn't one sign on that site that says that there's danger of radiation there. Not one. And Kermagee walked away from 2,700 toxic sites. They buried the debt on one of their subsidiaries, Tronics, sold themselves to Anadarko for two for 21 billion dollars in cash. Tronics had to file bankruptcy. Their investors got tanked. Everything at the SEC is suing them now. It's just went through the the court case just finished in November. And they walked away from 2,700 toxic sites, leaving the taxpayer to pick up the bill to clean it up. Let me ask me, uh, all, any one of you can jump in here. Um, we just actually spoke with uh, the, the director of another environmental film, Greedy Lying Bastards, uh, which is sort of about, about, the, about climate change deniers. And I asked this guy, the director, um, does he think that environmental concern is sort of a luxury issue, which is sort of this idea that people focus on environmental concerns when there's nothing else to deal with, no jobs, no crisis, no foreign wars. Uh, do you think that's true? Not I mean, is it hard to get DC to pay attention? Oh, <laughs> it's hard to get DC to pay attention to anything that's meaningful. But 
um, this is not a luxury concern. This is about the very building blocks of life. You think of the importance of water. Something that um, Liz has really been exploring in this film is um, the extraction techniques that are being used in situ leach mining, going down and contaminating aquifers. And we're not talking small wells. We're talking enormous aquifers that go across entire states or underneath that we all draw our water from. And the amount of, um, you know, tried to prove it as one there, what well, the EPA person was saying, but 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 the amount of cancers that we're seeing and the very building blocks of life are being attacked by very short-sighted and um, short-term interests. We need to be focusing on the environment because we have one planet to live on, and if this planet cannot sustain us in a healthy way, we're all going to be suffering from a lot more health problems. It's going to be a lot more than the question of who pays for healthcare and how is it insured. To how do we actually even function as beings on this planet? What do you think? How do we get to see to take this stuff? Well, more seriously. Look, two, almost two years ago, Nature magazine uh, determined that um, Fukushima emissions were more than twice those of Chernobyl. Well, we need some fact-based information to get out there. So Washington, which does run on Patrick, even if they don't always use them to make decisions, uh, can have the facts of what's happening with the contamination of the environment. Um, but the problem is, you know, if you look at the economic influence that the nuclear industry has, uh, it, and the political influence they have, it's enormous. And um, it's part of the problem of our uh, political economy, where our political economy rests on certain uh, energy production methods that are adverse to the survival of the planet. It's not just nuclear. Uh, it's oil. It's, it's all carbon-based technology. And nuclear, which was put as an alternative to it, has an entire range of problems that are that are even worse than uh, than carbon-based technology. So, what do you do about it? Look, this is about this is this is about heightening public awareness about the dangers to the environment that are occurring from the from the nuclear cycle. And we didn't even get into nuclear weapons, right. which is which you know is the sort of Damocles that hangs over. Uh, the planet. It's another uplifting topic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's a subsidiary. But industry. Fukushima happened, yeah. Chernobyl happened. Yeah. Who's to say that you could never have a, uh, an accident or some kind of a strike with uh, some nuclear technology? I mean, people, you know, loose talk where people will talk about using uh, low, you know, using uh, nuclear bunker busters against another country that you disagree with. I mean, there's a madness about this. There's a depravity about it that uh, that a film like uh, uh, Liz and Elizabeth have worked on uh, helps to challenge. I just got the, uh, the 30 second warning. Quickly, uh, let's see if we can maybe go out on an optimistic note. Um, there are some people in the environmental community who looked at the President's mention of the environment in both his second inaugural address and his State of the Union address as a reason to be optimistic, uh, especially considering that he did get a lot of criticism for maybe not acting strongly enough uh, in his first term. Talk a little bit about maybe are we optimistic about what kind of leadership we'll see out of the White House, out of Washington in the next four years, or do you think it's going to be business as usual? I, I expect it will, it will continue to be business as, as usual until old fat grandmas like me get angry enough to stand up and say, no, not in my house. No, no more. We have to be the ones to tell them, no, you can't dig up poison and make stuff out of it. No. Elizabeth, are you optimistic? Sadly, no. I'm you know, sorry. We're realists. We work too much. St. Patrick's Day is coming. Yeah. <laughs> we'll all be radioactive green. <laughs> all right, Ms. Rogers, dubbed the Aaron Brockovich of uranium from this Oh, film. my gosh. That's a good nickname. I like that. Elizabeth Kucinich, Dennis Kucinich, uh, all behind hot water. Thank you very much. And um, if you do go back to the Oscars next year. You want to come? Yeah, I mean, don't forget about it. We got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only if Jennifer Lawrence is nominated. Oh, wow. <laughs> all right. All right. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you.